because now now it's going to take a minute for everybody to catch on. But that's fine. We'll just hang out and I'll have a drink until somebody comes. Oh, there's one to like. Drink the water, right? Um, well, I'm having wine tonight. Yeah. It's a lovely um, Argentinian. Uh, it's called Crios from the Mendoza region. Yes. Taco nachos. Hello. Welcome to our live show. We screwed up with our live show uh, format, so we didn't get a chance to notify anybody. So we're going to be a few seconds before everybody jumps in here, obviously. Uh, and yet there's 22 people watching. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to talk about uh, COVID-19 pandemic garbage and the way it affects us with our supply chain. I got new information to share with you tonight. It's going to blow your mind. How's everybody, first of all? We all surviving? Yeah, welcome to the show. Cheers. Just so you know, this live show will not be broadcast again later. It's a live show or bust. <laughs> all right. So if you got questions and you want answers, uh, you can jump in and ask them and get them. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we're not going to be uploading these to the channel anymore. It's going to be uh, first come, first serve. If uh, you care to invest your time to be here, then um, we'll, we'll, we care to help you out. That's how that's going to work. Um, bum, bum, bum. Oh, wow. You're binge watching my whole library for the past month. Yeah, good luck with the house buying. That sounds, I hope you don't have major plans, right? Hello, Eleanor. This is not a good year for major plans, guys. All right. Welcome to the DIY show, guys. Here we are. Oh, man, my back is really stiff tonight, Matt. I'm working too hard lately. Mm, very tense. I'm going to need some muscle relaxers. Mm. I love that. Miss all that. I'm battling a shipping container home. That is a great idea because at least you don't need a whole lot of lumber. <laughs> uh, uh, anybody in the chat, did you guys go see my um, survey that I did today? Overwhelmingly, everyone's like, what is going on with the cost of materials? Yeah, thanks, Matt. You're going to fix that for me so I can read it? Because, you know, I'm going blind. I don't wear safety glasses and it's, it's having an effect. All right. Oh. Okay, guys. First of all, um, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the show. We're going to get started. We'll kind of reiterate a few things here and there as everybody jumps in over time. But uh, in case you don't know, my name is Jeff. I have this. Uh, I run this cute little YouTube channel here where we help homeowners do renovations, right? Um, this year, I'm going to suggest right out of the gate before we go any crazy, let's remove the word renovation from our vocabulary this year. And let's try to remodel, all right? Let's dumb it down a little bit. This might be the one year that I, in my entire life when I'm thinking... Maybe it's not such a good thing to do what I'm saying because uh, good luck trying to find stuff. <laughs> right? Remodeling the basement. Yeah. Hello, my name is Jeff. Um, yeah, here we go. So I was on location today filming. I can't tell you what for because I'm going to wreck the surprise. But um, I was getting insider information from one of our industry experts. And he's telling me scary, scary stuff. Scary stuff there. We got uh, we got we got companies in in Canada that can't even make windows for their customers because they are not even being considered for the shipment of the extrusions that that PVC molded piece. They're not even being considered for that because they're too small of a company and there's not enough product to go around. So it's going to be interesting. Um, I was at Home Depot on Monday because, you know, every once in a while, I got to go to the corner store. And they have a, a policy there, you know, guaranteed a thousand sheets of drywall in stock every day. And then I get there and guess what they didn't have? Yeah. Like I called the manager. I'm like, what's going on here? He goes, well, we got an order in. We're not getting any more till Friday. Friday. A whole week at the Home Depot with any drywall at all. OSB was running 55 bucks a sheet. You might as well just close your doors. Like, what the heck? Who's buying that at that price? Uh, two years ago, I could buy OSB tongue and groove, four by eight foot sheet at $9. Matt, what are you doing? Someone asked for a how to build a shed video, so I just posted your link there. For really? Well, that was very kind of you. Thanks for doing that. All right. 
Yeah. So, I mean, last year during the pandemic, we had issues with um, uh, shipments from China, right? We had issues getting products from China. So things like the metal spindles, aluminum products, um, hardware issues. This year we're having homegrown product issues. Okay. So it's going to be an absolute disaster. I am not seeing the light at the tunnel anytime soon. The one thing I can guarantee you is there's paint. <laughs> we we all need to learn how to paint this year, inside and outside. I'm 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 going to do a video how to paint your grass because I mean like <laughs> we're running out of things that we can get accomplished. Listen, I put in my uh, my survey today. Hey, what can we do instead of wood? And the answer is steel. You can frame with steel. All right. And there's lots of steel. It's a North American product. We make it ourselves. And so far, so good. If you're looking to do decking, go to composite, right? Go to Trex or something like that. Like, you might as well, for the cost of wood, you can you can have a composite decking that doesn't need any maintenance for the next 50 years. So don't be crazy and go buy wood. Just buy composite. Watch our deck series. We show you how to use the uh, clips from camo screws. They've got some wonderful clips for installing Trex. It's really easy. It's barefoot friendly, right? There's no screw surface. I'm telling you, there's options out there. And with the housing market and interest rates the way they are, let's talk about this. Because, you know, I'm not a housing market expert, but I'm not stupid. And I know how to listen to people who are. Over the last year, and I'm going to generalize North America, even though this is kind of Canadian numbers, the number of international students is going through the roof, right? The number of houses being built has gone way down. The amount of immigration coming to our countries from, from policymakers is way up. And we're kind of, we're, we're stuck. We got too many people, not enough housing. Plus the interest rates are an all-time low. So everybody and their uncle, everyone and their dog is buying a house, okay? Like it's just getting ridiculous. So in Ottawa, our prices are up like, well, I don't know what, what, what was it? Like 30, 40%? 50% and that's when they put the price on and then they get over asking 30 to a hundred thousand dollars more than the house is worth. It's just insane. So if you're thinking about putting on a deck and selling your house, dude, go composite. Just put in the, put in the, put in the Cadillac deck and don't even think about it because if you're selling, you can't mess that up, right? It's the wrong year to be cheap. I'm cheap. This is the wrong year for cheap. Anyway, there's my rant for the morning just to get started. Um, there are options for fencing, okay? I was talking to my guy named Christian. My guy Christian, he's on the, he's on the inside. He's on the, he supplies the products to the, the stores that supply the products, okay? Christian is telling me that uh, LP, you've heard of LP siding, that we use that on our uh, deck, actually. Or no, not our deck, our shed. We use that LP siding product. They have a brand new LP siding product from LP. It is LP fencing. Think about it. It's a composite fence board. It's a 50 year fence with no maintenance, no painting, no sanding, no staining, no fussing around. I'm telling you right now, products like that are going to be worth the weight in gold. Generally speaking, they're um, petroleum based products. So for everybody who hates the gas industry, you're going to love them after this because we can't get wood. Uh, okay, so somebody here does super chat. Yeah, rules today. Uh, I'll answer questions, but super chat this stuff, guys. Um, was at Home Depot the other day. Lumber price doubled in Alberta since last year. Guy was telling me it's going up more. Where to buy for decent price? If you want to buy wood at a decent price, the, your best option, okay, is to cut down your own tree. All right, I'm telling you right now, there's no option. This is this is a uh, it's an international crisis. All right. Aw, Miss Audat, join the membership club. That is a really smart move, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> right after this break. Oh, man. You know, thank God some things in this world are still affordable, like Creos from Argentina, from the Mendoza region. Absolutely delightful. Um, man, oh, man, oh, man. Are we sure that the microphone works right? I have no idea. Are we sure? Anybody here and having issues with the sound? <laughs> I haven't heard anybody telling me, so, you know, I guess it works fine. Yeah. 
you know, sometimes our ears can be full of all kinds of crap. I mean, I have to clean it out if you have a problem hearing. Turn up the volume. There you go. Thanks, guys. If Andrew can hear me, everybody can hear me. That is the deal. All right? All right. <laughs> uh, you know what I want to do? I want to, I wanna like, um, I want to just get the hell out of here, to be honest with you. I'm so tired of being in Canada. And I love my country. I'm a proud Canadian. Don't get me wrong. But dear Lord. It is nice to be able to have the ability to go and do some traveling. I'm tired of this. I'm listening to the folks the other day talking about all this mess going on. And everybody seems to be more concerned about making sure that the, uh, I'm not going to go there. I'm not a political channel. <laughs> Scratch. Stop. Shut your hole, Jeff. All right. Maybe that Creos isn't such a good thing when I'm on the live show. Ah. Hey, Hoser. Cool. 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 Shout out to all the Canadian Canucks. Hey, yeah. Here's the deal. You, oh, Noah found our channel a week ago. Like it wasn't lost. I don't know. This is YouTube for you guys. We've got a, uh, what I think is a pretty informative, helpful thing going on. And YouTube slowly informs people. Uh, Charlie sent us a message here. He's uh, 26 years old, bought his first condo a year ago, renovated the whole place with my videos, knew everything. Thank you so much. Well, Charlie, you're welcome. I'm happy to help, man. That's great. That's why we're here. We're, we're, we're breaking boundaries and destroying glass ceilings. I know, figure, eh? An old white guy talking about breaking glass ceilings. Listen, there is a glass ceiling out there when it comes to construction for homeowners. Let's talk about that real quick. You guys are the largest buying group on the planet, all right? Bar none. And you get no respect. But I'm changing all that. That's right. I got announcements coming real soon. I can't wait to share. I'm just waiting for some ink to dry, and then I'll share it with you, okay? But uh, that's enough said. Whoop, suspense. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, yeah, send pictures of that condo there, Charlie. I'd love to see it. Um, bum, bum, no, 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 no. So supply chain issues. Let's go through this. Last year, we had issues with China. Uh, they had manufacturing issues. COVID happened. It wrecked everything at the docks. Then shipping rates went up. So all kinds of confusion there. Yeah, the, the cost to move a boat from A to B tripled last year, right? So that's that's kind of wrecked the Alibaba sales model, right? Of here's everything dirt cheap. All of a sudden, somebody realized that we're willing to pay whatever it takes to get stuff when it's in short high demand. And so the shipping rates have gone through the roof. That ain't ever going backwards. I'll tell you right now. So for the rest of your life, um, half the stuff that's on Amazon is going to be more expensive from moving forward. Get used to it. Um, here's, here's, the, here's the thing. We don't have a lot of lumber because we don't have people out in the forest cutting it down. We don't have any pressure treated lumber to speak of as far as inventory is concerned. And what's been produced over the winter, they've stopped making more. Okay. So now whatever that nine or 10 sticks of lumber is, they're going to slowly release it to the economy at $800 a linear foot. It's just the way it's going to work. So get used to it. It's not going to get any better. Next year will be next year. This year sucks. Uh, hey, Bear, welcome to the money in the bank, dude. And if, and if you are planning major projects, okay, and you need anything in the way of wood, forget about it. All right? Just get it out of your head. Go to Steel Studs. Okay, we did a video on how to use steel studding. It's really convenient. It's not that difficult. There's a couple of nuances you're going to need to learn. You're going to need steel studs. And guys, if you're just tuning in, just so you know, we are not publishing this video. Okay? These live videos I'm doing with you guys from now on in are not going to get published. So if you've got questions you got to ask, and the only way to get an answer is to super chat it or be a member. Okay? That's how we're going to do this. All right? I'm, uh, I'm giving up my Thursday night to be here, and, uh, you know, I'm not giving it away for free. So, hey. Shoot me if you want. All right. Yeah, prices will come back down. It's commodities. So Joshua's got a great question. Are the prices going to come down? Yes, they will. When? Once everyone's allowed to go back to work, right? Like, can you imagine? We take everything for granted in this country, right? Oh, I'm so inconvenienced. My train is a minute late. The truth is, I mean, we're starting to learn the, 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 the cause and effect. Hey, Sandy's in the house. Cheers, honey. We're learning cause and effect of what happens when policy gets in the way of common sense. 
right? Like, I understand. I get it. it. It's a pandemic, okay? You don't have to beat me over the head with it. But for the love of God, if people can work in a grocery store, they can sure as hell go to any other job in the country. That's just my own two bits. Move on. Like we can't cut down trees anymore? That's even an outdoor activity, for God's sake. We've stopped, we stopped people from going skiing this year. I don't know. It's a mess. Let's not go there. The reality is, is we can't get stuff when you want it. When you go to Home Depot and they say, hey, it'll be a week before you get uh, drywall, I feel like I'm living in Belarus in, in 1980. Like, what the hell is that? That ain't normal. It ain't acceptable as far as I'm concerned. Oh, stop with the common sense. Yeah, like God forgive us if we have to be normal. All right. Yeah. Um, Matt, I don't care if people want to say the pandemic's fake or, you know, I don't care. I don't, well, and maybe not be politics. I don't want to like, you know, squash everything. You know, we're not publishing this, so we're going to be free to have a little bit of opinion on here tonight. Let's just be nice to each other, even if we don't agree. All right. Can we, we can do that. Because at the end of the day, we're not here because we're left, right, up, down, inside out, or prolapse, or whatever. The point is we're here because we own houses, and we want to learn how to do stuff. And we, we're trying to get along and, and create a community where we can do that and help each other out. And that's a good thing. All right? So here's what I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to answer a bunch of questions tonight. Yeah, I'm, I'm going nuts with my supply chain. I can't even imagine what it's like to try to do a major project. I, I was thinking about putting together a list, all right, of all the materials that you're going to need to do a bathroom renovation so that you can do a checklist and they go through all the list, boom, 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 boom. And once you got it all, then you can start because God forbid you get halfway through it and then you're like, what do you mean I can't get any drop ears for my plumbing? What the hell am I going to do without a drop ear for my plumbing? <laughs> can you imagine? It could be that weird this year. All right. What's a good brand for a security front door lock? One that uses a laser Cut type key versus a rectangular slodge or quick set. Don't give a damn. Because if a guy wants to break into your house, it's two kicks and he's in. I don't care what you put on the lock. The best security you got in your house, depending on where you live, is probably a double barrel. Put a sign on the door that says you got one. And if it gets too close to the house, you can play that audio track. Click, click. If you loading the gun. And that might be enough to deter him. But listen, I was in uh, insurance world a long time. We, we used to replace front doors like they're going out of style from break and enter. Okay. I don't care how much money you spend on your door. If somebody wants in, they're going in. Like once to kick it the first time, they're committed. The second or third kick, the door, the, the two by four holding the door, it all snaps in half. So get over it. Okay. It ain't about the lock. It's about what's on the other side of that door that makes the difference. Ah, yeah. Woo. Forget the door, break the window. Yeah, you know, and if you're going to break into my house, just do the window, please. Like the door, seriously, that's a lot of work to install. The window's easy to replace. <laughs> Have some consideration, thieves. Japers, scrapers. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, let's get back into some. If you got questions, let's get down there. Jeff is pissed today. I, went, I drove 40 minutes to Home Depot to buy drywall, and I was told to go home, right? And you know what I said to them? I'm not going to finish that off. You can use your imagination. Jeremy, cheers, buddy. You didn't even ask a question. You're just throwing some love around the place. I love it. Uh, what kind of nail gun do I recommend for baseboards? One that are in stock. <laughs> Listen, anything that shoots a two-inch brad nail is good in my business. Uh, I actually like the rigid brad nailer because it stops when you run out of nails. And if you're new in the business, you don't hear the tone difference between full and empty when you're using a gun. The rigid gun is really good for that because it won't work if there's no nails in it. So you won't go 20 feet down the row and then go, well, how come nothing's attached when you look back? So that's a good idea. Dominic is uh, joining in the super chat here. He's, I can, sorry, we were shooting like nine videos this week and my lips are broken. I will be renovating a house soon for renting. Good idea. Anything you do differently as a soon-to-be landlord? Matt, can we do something? I got a big blue arrow in the middle of that word. I don't even know if I'm reading that right. There we go. Anything you do differently as a soon-to-be landlord. Because of the pandemic, <laughs> make sure that you're renting to somebody who's got a job that isn't here today and gone tomorrow. 
Government was to be a great renter nowadays. So they seem to get paid whether they're doing anything or not. I mean, it's an amazing thing, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. We, so should we build anything? Yes. Good idea. Should we build anything? Let's talk about what we can build. Okay? Because things are going to crap, but not everything's going to crap. So you can do windows and siding this year, right? You just can't deal with mom and pa operations. You have to up your game a little bit. Um, whenever you get into the marketplace and there's restrictions on supplies, you know, the, the, the smaller companies are the ones that suffer. So you're going to have to deal with bigger companies. And most of those companies you don't even know exist. So we're going to help you out with that. There are places that you can go and get products. Um, the corner store isn't really going to be one on there, but okay. All right. Um, things you can do. Think about doing patio work, right? Concrete block pavers. Do your own patio outside this year. That's a great project. Anything to do with paint, interior, exterior, uh, resurfacing fences and decks. These are all great projects, right? Landscaping, great project this year, right? Um, I mean, whether this whole thing is fake or not, it sure is having an effect, isn't it? You can't deny that. Like, if you wake up from a bad dream and your face is black and blue, there's a chance someone beat you up while you were sleeping. I'm just saying. Like, so no sense discussing about how we got there. The pain is real. <laughs> yeah. Where to buy windows at a good price. Don't do it for another week and a half. <laughs> what else am I supposed to say about this, Matt? You know? Don't buy any windows or siding for another week or so. Daddy's been working behind the scenes to set you up. All right, so maybe I'll talk about that a little bit, but without giving it all away. Here's my goal, right? My, my master plan. In the construction business, as a contractor, um, I'm able to arrange contractor pricing for a lot of different materials in town. Things like, um, if I become a distributor, I can get a great deal on kitchen cabinets, right? I can get a great deal on flooring if I'm an importer. I can get a great deal on windows and siding if I'm a, a contractor and I'm dealing with a massive corporation. I can get great deals on other products. I can get a great deal on paint. I know you wouldn't even think it, but I can get 40% off of a gallon of paint as a contractor. Let me finish that thought in a second. Okay, so P. Frangos, <laughs> English, please. Should I put down my hardwood floor before or after I install my kitchen cabinets? I'm installing engineered three-quarter inch hardwood with quarter inch cork. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so here's the deal. If that engineered hardwood is a nail-in installation, put it in first. Because that means that floor is designed to be there for the next 50 years and so is your kitchen. And it's a great sexy look. If it's a floating floor, put it in after because they don't last as long as the kitchen. And if there's ever any damage to the floor, you can replace it without destroying your kitchen. Cheers. You're welcome. I know. That's great advice. <laughs> You're rolling the dice if you try to get a sexy look with a floor that's not designed to last as long as the cabinet. That's all I'm saying, right? Sometimes a little bit of quarter round goes a long way. Uh, Andrew has got a super chat here. Just appreciate everything you do and have taught me. Dude, you're going to make me freaking blush. Finishing my basement as we speak. All right. Thanks for all the videos. Help me through this. Right? Finishing your own basement. You're like my hero. You guys are my heroes. You know, you're doing bathrooms and basements. Dear God, I was really trying to just help people paint a little bit, you know? Maybe put in a floating floor in the living room so the kids could have their friends over and not be humiliated. But you're all here doing these massive renos. This is awesome. Oh, yeah, yoy. You know, I was on a, um, a podcast once in Toronto. And we'll get to that in a second, Matt. And I'm and I'm sitting there. I was talking to a construction contractor. He had a pretty prestigious company in town, we'll call it. And I was telling him, you know, like, like it's not that tricky. He was asking me, so are, are you going down a, a rabbit hole teaching people how to renovate their own house? Isn't that best left to the pros? I said, seriously, have you gone to your job site lately and looked at who you consider a pro that you hire to do some of this work? Like some of these guys shouldn't even, they're not even fit to drive and you're letting them do restructural work on a home. And it's like, yeah, but they're, they're managed. Like you know, <laughs> where they're babysitting. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm actually dealing with people with an IQ who have employment and credit history and own a house. And I said, 
I'm going to roll the dice and say that they're more capable than that that guy that you dragged out of the the want to work for a day for dirt cheap to be on my crew scenario. And and I have a lot more faith in you guys than a lot of the construction crews in town. All right. Maddie, back me up a little bit here. I got Dick's message. That's cool. Steel studs in the basement theater family room. Will they be noisy with the bass? Noisy with the bass. Um, ha. See, the secret here is, is not about one part of the assembly. It's the entire assembly. So what's the level of sound control you're looking for? Because if I wanted to, I could do steel with steel, right? offset insulation in between. I can do double layers of five eighths with green glue and I could use new channel and sound clips, right? I could install carpeting. I could put a carpet on a subfloor. I could put carpet on a subfloor on a bed of sand. I mean, there's no end to the amount of soundproofing you do in a room. One aspect of that is not going to make it or break it. Okay. So if we could do the curve of soundproof, I'm going to say, if it was wood, it would be an 85% assembly. But with metal, I'm only going to get 82%. I'm telling you right now, I'm putting in the metal. Just saying. And if that bothers you, then hang hang a couple of nice um, sound absorption felt panels on the wall later. Okay? And make up the difference. But don't let that become the decision break, make it or break it moment. Um, I feel like I missed somebody in there, dude. Can you click across the top? Yeah, let's do that five dollar one. What does that say? That is the one I keep doing. Yeah. Hey, so Steve did a shed and he's throwing us some love. Cheers, Steve. Glad it was helpful, man. Never done a super chat before. Just wanted to say I like. What does that say? I like piss non PC. Oh, <laughs> listen, I'm not exactly. Um, I'm irritated, but, you know, I'm not pissed. I'm not hurting anybody. You'll know when I'm pissed. If you've ever been on a job site and I've been pissed, you'd know because you'd be through a wall. All right? That's just how it works. Man, holy cow. All right. Let's see here. Let's let's calm this down a little bit. Hey, Mary's in the house. Hi, Mary. Good to see you again. Yeah, um, there's more than one Mary all of a sudden. So <laughs> I could kill two birds with one stone. Look at that. All right, Sean just threw us a super chat. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it, man. Um, okay. Uh, anybody having issues with getting into the forum? Go into the community page. All right. There's post after post after post. We're trying to help you all out. But the secret is to go to the community page to get the information that you need. All right. YouTube is not making it easy for us to communicate. I don't even have your email. I can't send you guys letters. All I can do is post information on a board and then you got to read it and act on it. So that is the one downside to the membership program. Um, hopefully down the road, we'll be able to modify that. So there'll be a two-way communication street. I hope that happens. But, uh, you know, YouTube is constantly changing and evolving. So sorry about your problem there, but yeah, it's the best I can do. Um, yeah, metal studs in the basement is, is good for the fact that there's no mold in it. But then if you have a moisture issue, it won't matter because they'll rust out and the walls will collapse. So <laughs> best solve your water problem first. Um, Jay Black, Super Chat, would you suggest any upgrades to a pier and beam base? I'm going to be under there anyway. Can it be better? Thank you for all the doing helps. I guess it all depends. Most pier and beam are designed so that they have uh, moisture resistant plywood and that sort of thing already underneath. So it shouldn't be an issue. The real, the real secret there is to try to keep everything dry. It's all about air, okay? Make sure that you got good airflow. That's really the biggest kicker. As long as you got good airflow, you're going to be just fine. So um, make sure that there's airflow. You don't have overgrown shrubs where your intake or outtake is, okay? And and make sure you got good airflow. And if 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 you feels damp or you see the evidence of too much moisture, you don't have enough airflow. You can even put in an extraction fan on the uh, the east side of a building, right? Or the north side of a building um, because where the wind blows, all right? And you can help to draw the air through. So those things are on the market. Uh, that's about all you got to look for, all right? That and spiders. Uh, woo, yeah, watch out for the spiders. Uh, okay. Uh, uh. Guess who just joined the money? 
Do I have to guess? Seriously? Or is that just... There we go. Matthew, just hit the record button. There we go. Glad you remembered, buddy. Well done. <laughs> All this technology can be overwhelming. All right. Uh, Sean... Oh, okay. Sean sent out a super chat to ask a question. What do I think about dyeing carpet? Well, if it's dying, I'd remove it before it starts to stink. Um, if you're thinking about changing the color of existing carpet, I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never seen that done in my life. I would doubt that that would be very effective, to be honest with you. I'm the wrong guy to ask. I've never done it. Uh, so James is asking, how can I fix my shower Middle drain, if the contractor forgot to remove the protective plastic around it after installing everything. <sighs> All right. <sighs> yeah, you got to disassemble it. Here's the thing. Whenever you've got a layer of plastic, whether it's on the shower pan, right, or it's plastic in the assembly, anything that's plastic like a thin layer of plastic, water will find a way through that. It leaks. I don't know why, but it's like, it's like, it's like a, such a curse. What I would do, James, is I would contract, contact that contractor because contractors have insurance. And I would say, hey, warranty issue, get your butt back here and fix it. That's what I would do. If you try to fix it yourself, you void your warranty. So if you paid someone to do something and they made a mistake, you know, things happen. People make mistakes. Don't get too all worked up over it. Just call him back. I'm sure he'd be more interested in hearing that there's a problem so that he can come back and fix it than he would be interested in trying to run away from the truth. All right? Uh, don't let it get into your head that contractors are all scammers because they're not. Most guys just want to do a good job, get paid, take care of their babies. All right? That's the way it is. Um, this guy wants to know about thinking about new interior doors. Should I purchase the whole door system with the frame or just the slab? What's your recommendation for a water heater? Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of questions. If you're going to change your interior doors, change the whole darn thing. If your door systems are before 1975, okay? That way, at least you know you're only dealing with latex paint. If you have older door frames, then they're covered in oil paint, and you can't do a very good job effectively of replacing that door. And there's different sizes. The hinges are all in a different place. You're just creating a whole mess. So if you're going to change your door, change your damn door, right? Start fresh, and then you have a nice template to work from. Uh, Lydia is asking me, is it worth trying to repair wood siding with weather damage, which is God knows how old, probably 100 years, or just going for redoing all the siding? Okay. If you have wood siding on your house, Lydia, and you have water damage, usually it's limited to one area of the home. It's usually limited to the area where the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing. So it gets wet and it stays wet. So I would say it's probably worth it to repair that because good wood siding, if it's been maintained properly at all, isn't going to be in the same condition on every other surface of the house. So it should be limited to that. And you might find yourself changing a couple hundred square feet versus the entire home. It's just me. But it's a thought. Um, uh, the other side is, a lot of old wooden siding doesn't have a house wrap behind it. So taking off a layer of siding and redoing the siding in your house, depending where you live on the market and blah, 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 it might be a good return on investment. Um, here we got a question. I'm putting vinyl in the basement. I'm assuming you mean floor, not siding. <laughs> Plan on putting the dimpled DMX. Should I also put the soft skinny foam too? Okay, so here's the thing. The Dimple DMX with OSB subfloor is a great subfloor system. It's not necessary in every application. There are other products on the market that are like a foam underlay that are dimpled that you can put your vinyl right on top of. So that is a two-part installation. So if you're going to use those systems, then use that system and follow that system. Don't combine systems. So instead of going hard plastic dimple with OSB, and then flooring, you can go with just a dimpled foam underlay membrane with flooring, and it is acceptable. It's generally designed to be installed after all the walls are built, all right? So depending on how old your house is and how much water infiltration you're expecting to have, you might even want to kerf the underside of your wall plates so that water can drain through to the drain. Uh, 
you know, it's, it's, that's an interesting thing. Um, Colin's telling me that he loved our Texas streams. Well, cheers, man. You're just trying to help, you know, holy cow. I'm from Canada. When a neighbor's stuck in the snow, you get out and you help push, right? That's what you do. So, oh man, my neck is killing me tonight. All right. Um, bum, bum, bum. Any tips or products for doing stair railing? I don't know if you have a video on it. You know why I don't have a, a video on stair railings? Because I don't do them. <laughs> there are people out here in this world who are trained specifically to install stairs and railings. I'm telling you right now. There are people, that's what they do every day, all day. They've got three drills, and each one of them has a certain bit for a certain function. They don't fart around. They just show up, and it's done. And one day I saw that installed in a house and I went, there's a skill I'm never going to need to learn because that guy was so efficient. I don't care what he charges, I'm paying him. <laughs> so there you go. If you're wondering, you can call a, a local uh, carpenter shop, like in Ottawa. You can always go, what's that guy in the PN? What's it? Frank's. Frank's Building Supplies. Call Frank's Building Supplies. He's got guys there that he can send out to do all that carpentry work. It's worth money in the bank because you're going to screw it up at least once or twice if you do it on your own. So the DIY video for how to install a railing is called Frank from Frank's Building Supplies. All right, let them take care of it for you. Uh, oh, okay. So there we go. So he sent some photos from the condo. I can't wait. All right, cool. Cheers. Um, we are working on a new function for our forum. Is actually, it's a, it's like a bragging page. We're going to let everybody upload pictures of their projects. I think it'd be kind of cool. Hey, cheers. Robert's in the house tonight. Um, you know, yeah, for some of you, you know, like you've been members or something or commenting for so often, I start to get to know you. It's kind of freaky. Got a great big family. Hey, Matt, did I just go past a question there that looked interesting? Yeah. Wow, not just interesting. It's pink. I think pink means David sent us a lot of money. That's ridiculous. I guess I better give him an answer to that question. No, I think it's like directly related to the investment. We should learn this stuff. <laughs> All right. So David's going, hey, thanks for the help last year. Finished 1,300 square foot basement, two bed, one bath, full kitchen, minus the stove, full soundproof, living quarters. Couldn't have done it without you, David. Well, cheers. Thanks for the tip. Appreciate it, David. I'm glad I was able to help, man. Like, I mean, every time we help someone like David do something like that, I'm, I feel like I'm helping someone elevate their place in life, you know? That's a damn good feeling. I'll tell you. Oh, my goodness. Okay, guys, we need some questions. Let's do this. I'm about ready to fizzle out. I need some stuff. We were talking about, uh, what are we talking about, the pandemic today? Right? We have supply issues. Holy crap, we got supply issues. If you haven't been around, can't get drywall. Don't ask me. It's dust between paper. How come we can't make that stuff? I have no idea. Um, yeah, we all know the wood's ridiculous. Just so you know, I... Uh, I went to the Harbor store on Monday. Okay, Bruno, I'm going to get you in a minute. Oh, that's just a tip. That's just cheers. That's nice. I went to the Harbor store on Monday to buy some lumber because I wanted to do a mock-up floor assembly. We did a whole series of videos on, on, on house construction before engineered floor joists. Okay. How to take your old wonky wavy house, cut it all open and fix it all up and put it all back together again. And, Drill holes and do all your mechanical and get yourself set up for success with modern flooring because modern flooring does not work on old floors. Newsflash, they change the rules on you. They used to tell you to install carpet or hardwood, and that was great because those products were able to follow all of the contours, no problem, right? You can make a floor as screwed up as you like and carpet lays down just great. But as soon as we wanted to go to products like tongue and groove vinyl or engineered hardwood and tile, the big tile, I mean, we have to prep the floor differently. Not all floors are equal. So we did a whole series to show you how to do all that and have success so that you don't waste your time putting something together that you're not happy with. I have no need to do that. But I put the whole mock-up together because I'm just we're looking at all the comments and all the questions. I'm like, okay, I'm doing an 1880s farmhouse, but a lot of people got questions with a different generation. They're 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s homes, and they're in trouble. And so we did all that to help you all. This should be out in a few weeks. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you should go do that right now because you don't want to miss that series. It's going to be amazing. Um, 
Michael has a question here. Hey, Jeff, maybe a silly question. Never! But in your shed video, why did you put the plywood sheets horizontally versus vertically? Oh, the sheds I just did. Horizontally? Um, because when you want to make something strong, you always install your sheathing contrary to your studs or your joists or your rafters, okay? That gives you the greatest number of pieces of lumber combined to one sheet of plywood. If we go vertical, my whole building is broken up now into sections of three that operate independently of each other. It doesn't tie the building together, all right? So this is actually for structural integrity. And by staggering the joints, I make sure that when the big bad wolf comes and blows on my house, it doesn't get blown over, all right? <laughs> uh, okay, so Robert, <laughs> five bucks for the shout out. Five bucks for the question, how many blue shirts do you own? I think I'm at 23. Half of them have gold since we hit a million subscribers. Huh? Gold? Huh? And half of them are silver from when we were only between 100,000 and a million subscribers. And speaking of, I got something to share with you guys. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, you guessed it. We have another plaque. This one here is the silver button for our Reality Renovision YouTube channel. Yes, and it is changing. It's getting better. We've been having a lot of fun experimenting with that, trying to do a reality TV show. And on our limited budget, it's been a lot of work. But this right here, this says, ha, 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 we did 100,000 subscribers, which is awesome. We're real proud of this. And if you aren't subscribed to that channel yet, you should be. I'm telling you right now. Put that right over here. Oh, I'm like big brother and little sister going on. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Why well, you can't see it over there? Not really. All right. How's that? Is that better? Is that better, Matt? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're doing some designing while we're here. We are making some changes to that channel. We're going to be doing more and more and more up-to-date real-life information. So um, there's a lot going on in our world. Man, I can't. I'm getting tired of saying that. I want to make some announcements. Am I allowed? Nope. Matt's my. Uh, he keeps me in check, right? All right. I can't make announcements yet, but that's fine. But things are coming. It's exciting. It's going to be a great year. Really, really enjoying it, right? Yeah, congratulations. It's fun. All right, Kyle's got a question here. Jeff, whoever built our home made the space between floor joists really uneven. Now I'm trying to insulate so I can drywall and make a basement home theater, but nothing is a standard size. What's the best thing to do there? Okay, so... Um, you're going to have to buy a knife and cut your insulation to fit the size. I know. I've seen a lot of these homes, right? They're like spacing all over the place, big, small, little. And there's a reason for all of that. But yours is not to understand the reasoning or the spaces. It's to fill them. So the mineral wool, you can actually buy a special handsaw, right? And you can cut mineral wool exactly to fit. Or you can just take fiberglass and measure your gap and cut it a quarter inch wider and stuff it in there. I know it's maddening. It's time consuming. It's frustrating, but um, that's all you can do. Um, Andrew's saying here he's done the DMX and OSB floors and planning to put vinyl plank down. Can I run this through into the bathroom in a basement scenario? Yeah, you can. The secret there, my man, is you want to really screw that OSB tight to the, the, the cement in and around the toilet area, especially. Okay. And you don't want to run it underneath your tub or shower. All right. Run it up to it. Once you've got it nicely anchored, you're going to be fine. And instead of using wax ring on your toilet in that situation, because your subfloor has got the potential to have movement, use the rubber gasket and really tighten her down well. All right. And you'll be fine. That'll work great. Uh, James wants to know if he can put his gas dryer vent through the roof from the basement. No. It's too far. Keep your keep your dryer vents under 20 feet. Okay? That's that's just going to be too far. Big mistake. Efficiency is going out the window. I mean, you, you might as well just uh, hang the clothes up on a line in the basement if you're going to do that because they're never going to dry. Okay? I think that's probably really good advice. Um, 
Yeah, you could just get an oscillating fan and hang your clothes on a line in the basement and you know, drive faster than, than having a 25 or 30 foot dryer exhaust. How are we doing, bud? It's fuzzy. It's fuzzy. Now we're going to adjust our focus here. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you know, when you have a few too much to drink, everything looks fuzzy. All right. Joshua has a question. Uh, hi, Joshua. His floor slopes down in the middle quite a bit. Would it be worth it to put a new floor in without fixing it? Heard it's expensive to fix. Okay. Well, the $5 answer to a $1,000 question, Joshua, is if you're talking about a basement, then it could be expensive to fix because you have to put in a poured concrete or gypcrete or something like that or lots of floor leveler. If it's wood and your house isn't level but the whole house bowls to the middle, we call that character. So just learn to love it. Um, Maddie, we skipped over that pink question there. Oh, they just okay. That just hangs around and doesn't go away. Nice. Uh, Chris has got a question here. We're putting up, we're painting our stairs. Should we put some form of poly or something on top to protect the paint finish? Yeah, you know, you could put lacquer. You can put lacquer on top of acrylic paint. That works really good. That's a nice hardener. And you can even spray lacquer if you want. It's your call. But uh, lacquer works really good. Just remember that in the future, if you ever make nicks and stuff and you want to patch it up, um, you've got you've to then kills all of the lacquer because <laughs> you've got to be able to prime the oil-based lacquer in order to put acrylic paint on it to then lacquer again. All right? That's the only downside. Um, if you use a 100% acrylic semi-gloss paint, you're going to find that that's pretty much bulletproof. Okay. Now it can take up to 30 days for those paints to finish curing, but when they're done curing, it's pretty tough stuff. I wouldn't get too worked up over the results um, and, and think about needing an extra coating. If you use a good quality, 100% acrylic, semi-gloss paint. All right. Cheers. Clayton has got a question here. Uh, thanks for sharing the info. You've been great help. My reno, much love from Malta. Well, cheers to Malta. Can't wait to come visit someday. Hell, I can't wait to drive down the street again and not get in trouble with the law. <laughs> oh, Matt. Uh, would somebody give me a vaccine shot so I can get on a plane? Uh, gotta love being in Canada. I think we'll be the last people in the face of the earth to get the vaccine. Maybe not the last, but we're really close to the bottom of the line. Um, here's a question. Eleanor, I'm going to answer your question just because it's a great question. Do you have to level the basement floor in order to install vinyl flooring? I'm sorry, what? Huh? Just answer the question. I'm just going to answer the question. Yeah, you're fine. Because, yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk later. Yeah. I think I've gotten in trouble there, Eleanor. Not at all. All right. Good. Okay. Yeah. So here's the deal. If your floor is bold and you put in flooring, the distance between corner to corner at the end versus in the middle is different and the flooring won't stretch. So it is going to open and separate a little bit on every plank that you put in over time or just in one or two spots really dramatically. So that's what really sucks. So uh, this is kind of how it works. Um, being reminded, we are not uploading this video to the, our site later. From now on in, these live shows are going to be just between you and me. And we're going to keep it here. All right. Uh, welcome to John. He's in the membership program now. That's awesome. Cheers, John. Uh, Nemo's got a question here. Jeff, do I have any plans to make water abatement videos? I get pools of water in various places in my yard after it rains. Yeah, water is a house's worst enemy. You know, the, really the secret to knowing about water and water diversion is for every, every foot of basement you have down, you need to keep water a foot from the house. So it's like a 45 degree law. If you have six feet of basement, you can't have standing water within six feet of the building. And if you have that problem, you need to find a way to solve it. One of the easiest ways is to install a French drain, which is just to dig a trench, add a little bit of crushed stone, put in um, a four inch pipe with a sleeve on it that's got perforated holes, and then cover it back up with some more stone and dirt 
and then it'll give and run it somewhere where the water can get away from your building, right? And you can create like a, an invisible drain system around your house. That's a really great way to do it. Or you can put it right up next to the house. But I mean, if you're in a real flat area, it can be really dangerous. Um, bum, bum, bum. Am I out of questions? Hey, Prophet is fry in the house. Good to see you again. Okay. <laughs> Tell the guy in the background to knock it off with the interruptions. <laughs> Those are called children, and they will never do that. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. The modern hippie has got a question. Replacing the treads on the stairs going to the basement. Can I use real oak treads, or do I need to use a wood-like product? I guess it depends on how nice your basement is. I mean, if you're replacing them treads all together, you can go with uh, real oak. You can go with oak veneer, and then it looks like real oak, and then it's like a press board inside. That's a great way to save a few bucks. Um, yeah, there's a lot of options there. We're actually planning on doing that video. Man, we haven't gotten to it yet. We're going to do like seven different ways to refinish your steps. And uh, I've got all this stuff sitting there. We just got to film it. But unfortunately, I think we're not going to be able to film anything for the next couple of weeks because Max, yes, him and his wife are about to have a baby. I was going to say Max is going to have a baby, but technically that's incorrect. <laughs> so he, uh, they're, they're due in like, I think another week or so, but there's a full moon next weekend. So I'm, I'm putting a thousand dollars on it. We have a baby by Sunday. Um, so we'll do that video once we get back from that and it'll be awesome. Uh, question here, would solid hardwood on a slab on grade be a bad idea? Engineered instead, question mark, worth the cost, height to put down three-quarter ply and nail down or just glue it? Well, here's the thing. If you're going to put down wood to put on wood, then what's the difference of just putting down wood, right? If you have a moisture transfer problem, you're going to have a moisture transfer problem. So uh, you either lay your hardwood and glue it down or you don't. The question is, is your slab got vapor protection underneath it? What's the age of your house? If you're not sure, tape down a garbage bag on your slab, leave it overnight and see if it collects moisture. If it collects moisture, I wouldn't glue down anything on it. Chances are it's got a vapor barrier, though. That's pretty standard practice for a lot of regions for a lot of years. But you can never be sure, so make sure you test it. Um, there are products on the market. We have vapor barrier um, sheets, like on rolls, like black tar paper with little notches cut into them right? Kind of like an old player piano scroll. <laughs> and we can lay that out on the floor. And then we put the adhesive on all of those gaps and lay the wood into it. So the wood itself never comes in contact with the concrete. So even if there's moisture in the concrete, it will not wick into the wood. And so there are ways to get around that. We also use that same technique in condominium buildings and it works great. Um, if you ever watch HGTV, you see them putting hardwood in adhesive on concrete all the time. So it's definitely doable. It's not against the rules, but uh, you want to make sure you got the right conditions. Brent is asking me, his wife wants a wet room. Do I need to worry about sloping the floor around the tub from the splash from the shower? Huh. Wet rooms are interesting. If you have a wet room that does not have in-floor heating, everything has to be sloped towards the drain, at least one degree. Okay. You can't get away from that. You can't just cheat and make it all flat. There'll be too much sitting water and it'll all go through the grout unless you go to a, like a poxy grout. So th there's workarounds. The best wet room has a slope or has electric in-floor heating so that any water that's sitting around gets dried up. Okay. My biggest thing about wet rooms is if you're going to invest in one, then you might as well get the in-floor heating. For another few hundred bucks, you got a great luxury and it's a drying assistant, which guarantees the life of the product. Right? So just go all in if you're going to go all in. Um, it's like jumping off the diving board into a pool and trying to keep your hair dry. Just get wet. Get it done. Uh, hey, Jeff. Great work. Love your channel. we got a single large 13-foot by 10-foot bathroom upstairs. Okay. Wondering whether to renovate as is or split in two. Well, I guess that all depends if it's the only bathroom. Like if you're going to try to make an ensuite plus a regular, like a main bath, 13 by 10. Yeah, that's an interesting configuration. Um, I would suggest 
if you want, Edward, you could always join the membership program and you could send me a picture or a sketch and then I could talk about a little bit pros and cons. But uh, that's a really tough thing to decide. There's, I got to take in geography, a real estate market, um, valuation of the home, how many other bathrooms, other bedrooms in the house. I mean, there's so much into that question. There's no one way to answer that. Uh, but I'd love to help you out if you want. You can always join the membership and send me a question in our format, and we can follow up from there, bud. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Smelly cat. Smelly cat. All right. Did I just see myself test myself and send myself five bucks? <laughs> what is up with it? We having issues with the super chat there, guys? Ah. Uh, Wow. What time is it? Holy cow, it's already 7 o'clock. Well, since it's 7 o'clock, let's update. We'll start from the beginning. Um, let's just talk about supply chains. Listen, if you guys have got supply chain issues, I'd love to see some comments. What are you running into? I've got a company in Texas that supplies resin for exterior door companies that is way behind, and so they had to stop making doors. I've got a company in Montreal that was too small, um, so they weren't even considered for the um, extrusions for the windows, and so they can't make windows for the next three months. Imagine that. Only the big companies are getting the product. I've got I've got supply chain issues with drywall. Home Depot, no drywall for a week in my city. I don't know what the hell that is, but seriously? I've heard of all kinds of other different things, like stores without plywood. So let us know. What are you running into out there? That's really why I'm here. And we're getting sucked into all kinds of other rabbit holes, and that's all good. Happy to help you out, but um, I'd love to hear what your opinions are. Uh, if you got questions about your project, you can't move forward because you need alternative solutions. Feel free to ask questions, right? Not everything has to be made of wood. Um, just ask the Middle East. Like, <laughs> there's options out there. We just got to use different building techniques sometimes to get the job done, right? <laughs> you can always build a wall with cinder block. I'm just saying, it's not a bad thing. We get stuck in our own way sometimes. I'm just like, yeah, wood's too expensive. You know, go to steel, right? Like it's actually cheaper, Matt, to buy Schluter Curdy board for your shower than just about anything else. Like I can put Schluter Curdy board on a steel frame and it's stronger and cheaper than two by fours <laughs> in cement board right now. Two years ago, we would have thought Curdy was the Cadillac of showers. Now it's cost effective. I had somebody ask me the other day, you know, my wall's a little bit too flimsy with half inch Curdy. I'm like, swap it out for the five eights. They make it nine different thicknesses. So just get it as thick as necessary and you'll be fine. You can put a stud every four feet and go to two inch Curdy board. You can have a wall. And that probably isn't exactly technically correct, but <laughs> oh, wow. You've got a question here from a guy, some awesome, <laughs> is, am I reading that right? All right, member's name is Awesome Idiots. I got to answer that because that's, first of all, that's creative. He's got a 1900 home, okay, with the cane brick window sills sitting widthwise. Sure. How hard is it to replace sills with one solid stone? Not hard at all. They actually sell the lintels, any masonry supply store. Um, if you're in Ottawa, we go to Merkley. They're just sitting right there, okay? And you just chisel out the old stone, you know, and 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 then cut it and forget it and stick it in. Ain't no big thing. Yeah, so it's not a big deal. Um, those stones are really designed for being part of the finished look, the water diversion, and to give you something to uh, seal up the mortar around the window, right? So you can stick anything in there. You'll be fine. So just get yourself any kind of, Solid stone, lintel, whatever, depending where you live, they're going to have a different materials, but you, you'll, be, you'll be fine. It'll work just great. Am I up to speed? Okay. Oh, well, this has been fun. Has anybody else got a question? Oh, Eric wants to know. He's going to reground my kitchen floor. I'm thinking grout. Yep. 
You saw the video the other day in epoxy grout. Do I need to use epoxy or can I use regular grout? Okay, so I'm going to call the grout world into three grout kinds. Regular, really amazing, and epoxy. The, the, the ultimate deluxe. If you need to re-grout your floor, it means you've got too much deflection. It means every time you step on it, the subfloor and everything is moving. And sooner or later, the grout pops out. Okay? So if that's the case and your tiles are still intact and they're not delaminating, that means it's just not quite good enough for the regular sanded grout. Because sanded grout is just basically um, just basically wet dust stuck together, right? So let's move on from that. You need to up your game. Now, if you go to the next level of grout, it's going to be a polymer additive and sealer. It may or may not work. But So when we were in the business, every time we had a floor that was failing, we just went from sanded grout, bam, straight into epoxy. Never question. Epoxy will take those tiles, bond them together, bond them to the subfloor, just and, and it can float. I mean, you can make an epoxy tile bridge, just, just tile and epoxy. It, it's that strong. So it really is effective in saving your bacon. If that doesn't work, your deflection issue is so severe, it doesn't matter what you try, you're guaranteed to fail. But it is a good shot at it. 95% um, of the time we've fixed popping grout issues with epoxy, it solved the problem. So I think it's a fair bet to roll the dice on it and give it a shot. All right. Unless it's the entire floor that you have an issue with, then you probably just have the wrong size floor joist. But I'm just saying. Uh, since OSB is so expensive, what could we use for flooring? Well, I'm going to suggest you probably have a floor already. So maybe keep the one you got. Um, <laughs> if you're looking for subflooring for basements, don't follow my advice to use the dimpled membrane in OSB. Hell, don't renovate your basement. Um, wait till next year. <laughs> there is a solution. Uh, what is the name of that company? I can't remember. They make a, a, an insulated dimpled membrane. It's rather expensive, but it, it's a two-in-one. So you can't frame on top of it, but you can definitely frame your walls and then lay this inside and go flooring on top. It provides an air gap and it's a vapor barrier and it's a sound absorber. It does all those wonderful things. And it's probably a lot more cost effective. If anybody knows what I'm talking about and you got a product name, you want to throw it up there, feel free. Um, Bear is doing a shower reno. He has a curdy curb. It's very large for the three by four foot space. Is there a minimum size? No. No, there is no minimum. You can do whatever you want with it. It's just kind of like a, a recommended space for sliding doors. That's kind of how they made it. But if you're just putting on like a, a no door at all or a curtain, or you're going to have a swing door, um, you can, you can cut that sucker down in half if you want and save your space. You can even cut it shorter. Just use a saw, right? It doesn't have to be six inches tall. It can, it can be just an inch taller than the floor in the shower if you're putting in a door. That's no problem. All right. It's just, uh, it's just styrofoam. So you can mold it and shape it all you'd like. Um, go down the, just below that question. Oh, the blue. Yeah. Andrew, United Building Products for Drywall in Ottawa on Bentley Avenue. Yeah. Like, I mean, we've got to start dr buying drywall commercial suppliers. You know, we're in trouble because... If you're a homeowner, the commercial suppliers are not giving you a good deal. So if it's 10 bucks at Home Depot, it's 15 at one of these commercial places because you don't have an account. You don't have account history. They don't know how much you're going to buy. And they're inconvenienced that you even show up, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think it's DMX One Step. Thank you, Andrew. I think that's probably the product. Matt, can you Google that on the side? I think it's like a blue membrane. Let's just get that proper information out. Like it works. It was just really expensive, relatively speaking. And it didn't have as many. Yeah, that's the stuff. All right. Yeah. Um, so DMX one step, that's the that's the membrane. That's the stuff. It's good. If you're just looking to put down a floor and you want a thermal break and an air gap, it's fine. It's just uh, it's it's not as good a system as the one that I built because you can't build walls on top of it. So you're going to have issues, right? If you have a lot of water. But if it's a relatively new construction, you're looking for a thermal break, and you just want to get off the concrete, it'll work great for you. So feel free to do that. James wants to know, he's in a manufactured home, and the jacks under the house have not been adjusted. So the floor is uneven. Even after I've leveled the beams below the house, but the wood, yeah. the Part of that is because, depending on the age of the house, the floor was installed with nails, with no hangers. 
So everything starts to sag over time. Okay. Especially you go through seasons of high moisture, low moisture, and then the wood rots and it starts to shrink a little bit. These things happen. So again, it comes down to charm and character. Sometimes the best thing you can do is throw some joist hangers underneath to support it all. So it's not going to move anymore. Then you can add some floor level around the top side and even out the middle a little bit. Okay. Ah, uh, glad to see you're all right. Cliff, glad to hear you're good too, buddy. <laughs> Cheers, man. Mm. Yeah, Robert's right. If you have a dry basement, then DMX One Step is a great product. Or you can just go with a three millimeter EVA underlay for your floor. I mean, if you have a basement that's uh, newer and it has a VIP barrier and you've got uh, foundation wrap around your house, you don't have to spend a lot of money on your flooring. You just need something to give you a bit of a thermal break and that three millimeter EVA does it. And it's only 30 cents a square foot. So it's like price right, you know? Uh, yeah, the prices on wire has gone up. Yeah. You remember there was a, maybe 12 years ago, China was growing like a crazy machine. Like they're building a city the size of Toronto like every weekend. And the price of copper went through the bloody roof where you could recycle copper and it was getting like five, six, seven bucks a pound for recycled copper. Yeah. Well, it's a commodity. This is what happens. So here we are. People aren't working. The stuff's not coming out of the ground. Manufacturing facilities aren't working top speed. And every time somebody gets sick, they got to shut things down and make sure everybody's okay and go into quarantine. And it's really quite inconvenient. We've created a society with just in time delivery, right? And, and uh, that's not like Justin Bateman. I mean, just barely get to the store in time. Or if there's a traffic jam, the stores are empty. It's crazy. We have no warehousing anymore. Nobody wants to pay to put something on a shelf. So whenever there's a breakdown in the, size, in the system, in the cycle, it snowball effect happens, right? So this year, we're going to have a worse year than last year. Bottom line. There's just no way. Because last year we had huge demand. People were home. They had time on their hands. They wanted to fix their house. Prices are going up. Well, it's a perfect time to fix my house. It's a natural assumption. Well, you all created so much demand for building materials, and now the prices have gone through the roof. So you really got to decide, is this the year to do it? Am I going to be selling and taking advantage of this inflated market as well? Or am I fixing something up at three or four times the price, and I'm not planning on leaving? And in a couple of years when the market adjusts, I'm stuck with an over over cost and renovation. Why not just wait till next year when it's normal again? Like vaccines out next year, it'll be normal. We just need one good winter where people are working full speed and we'll be back to normal or so close. You won't even feel it. Right. I'm just, yeah, maybe this is a good year to learn how to paint. I'm just saying. Uh, yes, we use the famous Lepage adhesives. Um, better known as um, Loctite in the United States. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of difference between uh, what's on the market in Canada and the US. We just have different names for it for some reason. Cliff, he's saying we got six inches of rain this week. He's pumped this crawl space three times. It's coming in from the back of the house. Should I make it sure the gutters are good and French drain till I can seal the crawl space? Uh, yeah. You know... Man, if you're in the middle of it, it's hard to fix it right now. Eh? <laughs> Don't overdo yourself. Recognize you got a problem. Come up with a strategy to fix it for next time. But I would just pump my basement a couple more times until it, it, you're done. Man, oh man, oh man. Because, you know, that's a lot of work to try to do in the midst of a rainstorm. I'm just saying. I don't want you overdoing yourself. Like, we're not even supposed to shovel snow when we get over 50. Right? Because you can get a heart attack shoveling your snow. And there's a lot of real good evidence that that's the case. So I don't want you out there slugging in the mud in the middle of a rainstorm, trying to, trying to save your house. A little bit of a water event is not going to be the end of the house, right? It can get pretty wet and dry out again. So don't get too worked up. Uh, okay. How level tile floor? Ah, yeah. How level does it, how, hmm. How level tile floor for vinyl plank? Right? I think I'd have to add a word. How to level tile floor for vinyl plank. Um, yeah, so the tile has high and low spots. Ah, right? 
Okay, so here's the deal. If you're if you're going to cover your tile because you're not happy with it and you want a different look and your tile is a little junky, go buy yourself a grinder and put on a tile, like a porcelain tile blade, and just grind down all those ridges. And then throw on the three millimeter EVA foam and put your flooring on top. You'd be surprised. It'll fix it. It'll fix it. You can get rid of all that lippage, no problem. Um, my house has hardwood floor directly on floor joists. Yes. You have spots where the tongue groove has failed. Yes. Gaps a plenty. Ideas for mending. Lots of wood putty? No. Because if you have hard wood floor on floor joists and you have gaps, that means that your wood over time is drying out. Okay? Those gaps are evidence that you're getting too much dry air and not enough moisture into your wood. Which means that the underside of that wood is probably exposed to the atmosphere and not a temperature controlled basement. So trying to fix those gaps isn't going to help because as soon as you fill it, the wood's going to continue to dry and then that'll all crack out and then you're right back to square one. So the best idea for mending that is to install a floating floor on top of it and treat it like a subfloor and you don't have to worry about it. You can put on a, a little five millimeter vinyl floor or a half inch engineered plank, engineered hardwood on top, and you'll be just fine. And don't let it bother you, okay? But do me a favor, um, put in a vapor barrier first and then go. Don't let the same thing happen on the next floor, okay? Cheers. Problem solved. All right. <laughs> we got another question here. Oh, Colorado, the place I love to hate to talk about the most for basements. Three-step concrete, two steps and landing, sagging four centimeters into soil at front of steps. Okay, here's the rule. If you have a piece of crap stairs and you're not happy with it, um, jackhammer the heck out of it, get rid of it, and start over and do a new pour. Okay? Stop trying. You, you, what's the say? Oh, I can't. Can I use that expression? Can't make chocolate out of. No, I can't say that. Okay. There may be children watching. If it's junk, it's junk. Get rid of it. Start over. Because refacing stuff like that is an art form. And, and if you have to ask the question, it means you're not the artist for the job. Like, I'll be honest with you. So start again. Get some new steps. It's only three steps, for love of God. You can buy three steps and have it delivered. I would consider doing that. Um, yeah, like messed up concrete, it's messed up. Like not everything is designed to last forever, especially when it's stuck on the outside of a house, right? And sitting in the dirt. I mean, if, 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 if the soil conditions aren't perfect, everything erodes, everything moves, everything breaks, just start again. Uh, whew. What did you highlight there? Josh, got a floor joist that's starting to twist. How could this happen? Ah, the insanity. Um, it's built in the 30s and it's just starting to twist. <laughs> Wrong. Hmm. Yeah, you might have put in a brand new energy efficient furnace and you don't bring fresh air into the basement anymore. That might be one way. That could be why it started to twist. Your basement's starting to get just too damn dry. Consider putting a humidifier on that brand new energy efficient furnace. That's my guess. I could be wrong, but I'm just guessing. All right. Pink Sniper. <laughs> I'm loving this. What a great world. In the process of buying a great 1980s house that needs some reno. You're damn right it does. It's from 1980. I'm thinking of putting hardwood in master bedroom. Great plan. Is there a good underfloor heat system for the bedroom? Whoo! Underfloor heating for hardwood. You know what I would do? Uh, I'm going to suggest that you do some research for where you live and look up the concept of engineered hardwood flooring that is a floating floor. I just did my bedroom in this, and I'm going to be redoing my bathroom. It's got a heated floor. I'm going right over top of that heated tile, baby. It is old and ugly. And I'm just going to go stick it right on top and I'm going to have heated hardwood. Okay. No fasteners. And that's the secret. 
because you can put in a, uh, like a DITRA membrane and run your cable and then a little floor leveler. And you can go right on top of all that with any kind of floating floor, laminate or hardwood or whatever you have, vinyl. That works. Okay. But if you want to put it in a heated floor system with a traditional hardwood that you got to nail down, you're in a lot of trouble. I mean, you only got to make one mistake out of like 400 nails and you're screwed. So don't do that. Get yourself a floating engineered hardwood floor if you want hardwood. Okay. That is money in the bank. And if you live in Canada, actually, you know what? Check out our videos. Go to our website, homerenovisiondiy.com. Go to Decorner in the under our affiliates. They're starting to distribute a great engineered hardwood flooring product. And check to see if you can get that in your area and the shipping is reasonable. All right. Include that in your, your homework. Um, I just did my, my bedroom and I'm over the moon happy with the product. I mean, it's like the best flooring product that I've ever installed in my life. I've installed thousands and thousands and thousands of square feet. Matt, probably tens of thousands and tens of thousands. Oh, it's amazing. I can still stand up. Um, okay. The chicken home gym. Jeff, should I sell my house? Hmm. <laughs> He's outside of Ottawa in Lanark County. Probably sell for 500 and bought for 300. Had an agent out the weekend. Market is booming hot. Rocket ship. Yeah, here's the question. Where are you moving to? Exactly. Right? Exactly. Like, unless you're going to the East Coast and buying something for 35, there's no benefit to move. Everything else is done. Jack through the roof, too. Like, you, 500 bucks won't even get you a brand new townhouse in Ottawa. $500,000. Half a million dollars. Won't even get you in townhouse in Ottawa. So, like, if you're going to sell, have an exit strategy from the insanity market or, or just ride it out because it's not temporary. It's not going to crash. I've got a new opinion about the housing market. It's all about supply and demand. And at the end of the day, the whole world wants to live in the Western world because, you know, we're, we're, we're not killing each other and we got health care and stuff. So people with cash are moving here. So there's a huge demand to come to this country. And our governments have got policies where we're trying to bring as many in as possible. So, I mean, they're all in debt. So they want them to come bring their money in and spend it here. Hmm, maybe move into a trailer for a couple of years. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Um, or you can be like me. I'm buying a fifth wheel. I'm getting the hell out of the housing market. <laughs> I'm cashing in until my plane is ready to fly and I'm going to go live in Europe for a year. Well, not a whole year, maybe a few months. I got videos to make. But yeah, it's it's an interesting question. Like it, you really need the exit strategy, right? There's still places in Canada you can move and get a great deal in a house. Like go out east, right? Winters are hell, but for the money you're going to save, you can buy a place out east and a place down south in Florida. Go six and six, baby. I mean, six months in, six months out, not a bad idea, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, boop, 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 boop. Questions. That's my problem now, too. Yeah, see, you, you got to not get excited about what your house is worth. It's about what are you going to buy with it? It's a hell of a thing. So I'll tell you right now, the valuation of a house that you bought for three hundred thousand, it's not worth six hundred, except for market conditions. I can build a house for less than six hundred thousand dollars to replace your house if it burned to the ground by a fire, and I would make three hundred and fifty thousand dollars doing it if someone gave me that kind of money. Do you understand? It's just not worth what it costs to build. So then. What's wrong with that scenario? And is it going to maintain? Is it going to last long term? That's the million dollar question. Like what happens if something goes on and people just don't want to move to Canada anymore? <laughs> just saying, I don't have no crystal ball. But if I'm buying a house that, that costs 250000 to build last year and right now it's worth five hundred, I'm a little concerned. But what happens when it's only worth $250,000 again? Right, I don't want to cash in and buy something for seven hundred just because I can, and they'll be screwed because it's only worth three fifty. Right? Is that's a real speculative market? You want to be careful. I mean, man, you know, for five hundred thousand dollars, you could sell your house, pack it in, visa Argentina, live like a king, huh? What do you got? Another forty, fifty years? You could do that, no problem, on a half million bucks. Start a YouTube channel, Dude, yeah, start a YouTube channel, and live in Argentina. 
<laughs> like there are places in this world of half a million dollars and dude, buy yourself a crown, right? Get an island. You're done. Like, I mean, what's the obsession with staying? <laughs> okay. That's enough of that. Uh, Halifax is nice. Bring a snowblower. Yeah. Right. Or just, just move indoors for the winter and don't come out until the grass is green. Okay. There we go. Mary is saying that she sold her house, uh, pocketed the 40000 bought a double wide with the cash. Cheap rent. Yeah, damn right. You know, sometimes when things look as, just as crazy as they are right now, maybe it's just that crazy. I'm just saying. Uh, okay. Let's get on to the next subject matter. And no, we're not putting this up later for you guys to watch later. We're changing our program. If you missed the live chat, well, you missed it. Oh, uh, well. Maybe you'll join us another time. Yeah, it's true. The bottom line is, guys, I mean, they just don't do the same kind of analytics, okay? Like, there's just not enough interest in a live show because it's question and answers, people hanging out. You know, we're all having a little bit of, you know. The point is, when I release those videos, they actually hurt the analytics on the channel. And, and YouTube is a great big computer machine, right? It, it's... Uh, so when, when we post them after the fact, it hurts our numbers and it, it affects the channel and they, they, don't, they don't push us and suggest it as much as they used to when we do that kind of stuff. So it's an interesting experiment. But all the work we did with Texas and trying to help those folks out, it actually um, it slowed down the numbers on the channel quite significantly. And we were like, wow, okay, lesson learned. You want to help people? Great, but don't post the video afterwards. Oh, 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 oh. my goodness. So... Um, yeah, you know, if you want to come and get an answer question, that's great. But, uh, you know, like, let's get back on track so that we don't go broke. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, you often re reference my live show responses later. Um, you're going to have to tape it yourself then, because that's, that's what's going to happen here. Yeah. Jeez, YouTube, get it straight. No kidding. Anyway. Um, until they can figure a workaround for that, you know, a show is a show is a show. So, um, <laughs> you just logged in. You saw there's a live show. Yep. I'm still here. Still breathing. Cheers, Damien. If you've got a question, feel free to answer it. Your member, I'll answer it. That's how it works. Members, super chats. If you got a question, I'm here to help. And the longer it takes for you to ask the question, the less valuable the answer is. <laughs> Joseph is saying he records this on his VHS. Joseph, first of all, you own a VHS? <laughs> that is awesome. It's like anybody over there scratching this audio out on a, on a what are those, gramophones or whatever they're called? Matthew just looked at me like, dude, what, cassette, V8, what? All right. Eight tracks. That's awesome. Joseph, you got me cracking up there. Um, Adam's got a question. He's got a 3,600 square foot, 1920 home. That sounds lovely. We're in the start of the upstairs renovation. <laughs> we currently have boiler heat with hydronic baseboard. Got it. We want in-floor heat to get rid of the baseboards. Any suggestions? Yes. Adam, if you're going to keep the boiler system going, there is a company out there that makes uh, subfloor panels. They're about inch and a quarter thick. All right. And you can put them in their house and then you can run PEX tubing all through all of the panels. They help you design it and lay it out for your situation. And then you can replace all your baseboard with in-floor heating. Just a thought. It's a major change. I don't know if this is the greatest year to do something like that, but um, uh, it, it, it could definitely work, right? <clears throat> Just saying. It's an option. If For hot water heating upstairs, it's really the only option. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to go to electric. But Damien uh, went to Home Depot today. Empty shelves. That they're going out of business. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That was my fault. I bought everything in the store. Sorry. I've got work to do. <laughs> I just backed up a semi and said, I'm taking it all. Uh, oh, and Chuck has just joined the club. Welcome to Money in the Bank, Chuck. Boy, oh boy, you have no idea. That's the best investment you ever made in your life. Wait till you hear my announcement in a week or two. You're going to blow your mind. Cliff got lucky on his 1950 house. They pulled out all the gas room heaters for high-efficiency central heat and air. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
It's a great deal. The only thing with those old houses, when you change your heating system and you haven't changed your building construction, make sure you add humidity. It's amazing how fast you can dry your house out and make everything start cracking if you don't have humidity in your house. Okay. Um, my what? My thoughts on drive grid to use for backyard transforming from grass to pavement. Drive grid. Is that like that uh, large concrete block stuff? See that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then you fill it up. So it's an aggregate system. You fill it up and it holds it all together. So it isn't all soft and mushy. Um, yeah, that kind of technique works great. We used to use that with like a, like a, like a, like a honeycomb cinder block. And we used to fill it up with gravel. Same thing, only now they're using a plastic grid. Makes perfect sense, right? Structurally, it makes sense. Um, I would have no problem with that. Especially, you know, if you're in one of these places where, like my driveway could probably use that. We're all crushed stone. It's a huge U, right? If we put in drive grid in a way, hey, drive grid, you want to sponsor a video? Um, yeah, we could probably pull that off. That would be great. I'm just going to go with a lot of clear stone, actually, because I don't like all the mud from the rain. But drive grid will get you out of the mud. And there's lots of great drainage opportunities with that if you do a nice six or eight inch assembly. So uh, yeah, I'd go for it. Uh, it's a lot better than asphalt or asphalt. How did they say it? I saw that in the comment the other day. Yeah, so Canadians would call it asphalt because I think we just find it impolite to say ass. <laughs> That's probably why we added the P. But it's not really spelled with a P. So moving on. All right, Steve Park has got a 1910 house. No insulation anywhere. Don't need it. Two rooms in the attic. Where do I insulate? And not. All shiplap. OG wallpaper and whole house covered in drywall. Was told not to put any in walls. Only floor and attic. See, the only thing I'm missing here, Steve, is where in the hell do you live? It's hard to answer. Because we have homes from 1910 everywhere from northern Quebec to the Gulf of Mexico in North America. And I... I, how do I answer that? Are you insulating against the heat or the cold? Or are you get four seasons where you are? Jump back into the comments and let me know, and then I can help you out. I'm With all the shiplap, I'm assuming you're in the south, because shiplap was never really a northern thing. So let's go through this. Yeah, central Washington. Okay, there you go. All right. So you're going to get a little bit of winter, but you, you see, in 1910, the heat source was so hot, it actually, it melted the snow within four or five feet of the house outside of the building as well. All right. <laughs> yeah. They just have a great big ass stove burning hardwood, like it's going out of style. And the heat would blow through the walls and, you know, they never had a need for insulation. But now we're so efficient that we got to insulate or we die. So it's a different heating system. It's passive. It's very gentle. Like whew, blows warm wear on you, you know, it's a totally different deal. Sit in front of that old furnace and it'll melt your face off. But now we've got this wonderful thing. So you, what you've done is you've changed your heating system and the house technology hasn't changed. So the only way you can fix that, and you can insulate the floor and the ceiling all you want, but if your walls don't have any insulation, it's like having a screen door. I mean, you're done. So what I'm going to suggest you do in that kind of a situation is you can, if you don't want to damage... Like, it all comes down to how much do you value the condition of your exterior wall, right? Because you can drill holes and you can pump in insulation, pump it in, a little pipe, right? You can blow it in. Um, uh, you can take off all the drywall on the outside walls and then you can put all the bats in and then you can add drywall again and close it up again. It really all depends. You could um, take a look at the exterior of your house. You could add insulation on the exterior of your house, put it in a, a rigid foam board and then do a new facade on the outside of the house. That's another option. Okay. So consider that. Um, yeah, 1910, you know, it's like you're looking for a way to do it cost effectively, or you're going to just go all in and make it sexy and brand new. Uh, there's different directions there. Since you're a member, feel free to throw that in the forum and we can follow up. You can send me some pictures. Maybe we can help you out with that. Um, have I heard of floatplane.com? It's just like a, another platform. Another place to put my videos? Yeah, you know what? I'm 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 ID it out. 
Um, <laughs> uh, no, maybe remind, remind me next year, Austin, if you want, because to be honest with you, like we've been pushing so hard trying to get this new business up off the ground. Um, I'm exhausted, right? Our whole team's tired. We've been just pushing and pushing and pushing, trying to reinvent the wheel so you guys get great deals. And anyway, enough said. I can't go any further. I'm not allowed to talk about it. Matt's going to get me in trouble. I know. He's got that look in his face. He's like, don't you dare cross that line. All right. I'll make the announcement soon. And then you'll understand what I'm talking about. But we did it all because we love you. And we want to help you save a ton of money. Right? And uh, it's going to be good. Um, okay. So Cliff is saying vapor barrier. That's the problem with the region. I live up north. You guys go inside, down south, and it's outside. But we're the mix of both worlds. We can't do either. <clears throat> yeah. So really it comes down to how much heat are you putting in your building and for how long, right? If you're only heating your building for two months a year, vapor barrier is not a good idea because you'll put too much moisture in your wall cavity to do all the summer months. But if you're heating it for six months a year, it's a great idea. Different zones, different things for different things. Uh, miss all of that and figured out how to do her live chat. Good for you. Yeah. Master of the technology. Loving the show. Well, we're loving you for loving it. And then uh, Justin's got a question here. Uh, he's finishing a basement room with a sump pit. Yep. Pump drains beneath the foundation. Good. Only need a penetration for the pump cord. Yep. Best way to finish flush so I can carpet over it. Well, you don't want to do that completely. You want to have access, right? So what you do is you take your pit and you find that wire and you, you cut a, a cover, okay, out of plywood or something with insulation on the bottom. So rigid foam. And then you cut it directly in half where that wire is, okay? And you put them together and then you drill a hole and then you just kind of go like this over the wire, okay? Because what you want to do is you want to separate all that potential moisture from entering the atmosphere. That is how you do that, all right? You can even put uh, exterior seal gasket on that joint so that you can press it together. And that is money in the bank. All right. Boom, mind blown. Yeah. Really, you're having a moment? Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. So now, I that. now your mind's blown. Mm. So Kyle's got a one and a half story house with seaweed insulation. I'm going to suggest finishing off that second story. It's hard to live in three and a half feet. What would you do about the exterior wall? Spray foam? What would Jeff do? The house has seaweed insulation. I have no bloody idea. You know, back in the 50s and 60s, everyone experimented. In the last 10 years, everyone's been experimenting again. So I don't know what the need for the experimentation is. We've got solutions to these problems. I mean, there's no problem. Okay, let's see. Seaweed insulation. So you got one and a half story house with seaweed insulation on the exterior of the building, like the pictures I'm looking at? So you got seaweed insulation on the inside of your walls. What would you do with the exterior walls? Spray foam? Wow. Kyle, you done stumped me. All right. If you ever bump into me in a mall somewhere, I'm going to give you your money back. That is crazy. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know how to land a shuttle on the moon either. I, this is just so outside of my expertise. It's not even funny. It's a new environmental and there's lots of great experimental environmental ideas out there, but I haven't seen the application. I ha we haven't seen that in where I'm living. I mean, if you put in insulation in the inside of your house and it's still not warm enough, I would say abandon the seaweed and go back to something that works. <laughs> like maybe that's the solution, right? There's a time to save the planet. There's a time to not freeze to death. I mean, holy cow. All right. <laughs> maybe I'm just saying, you know, ay, ay, ay. Like there's some hemp insulation products out there that are actually really quite effective. And you can, <laughs> that's great. I've never heard of the seaweed. That's, yeah, that's organic. Organic insulation will probably end up rotting. How do they preserve it? Probably, probably use the same stuff that McDonald's uses on their fries. <laughs> Spray it on there and it'll never rot, right? I mean, oh, I've got fries in me that I haven't digested. They've been there for years. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my mind's going crazy. Oh, that's nuts. All right. It is 736. Do you know where your children are? Uh, guys, we got about half an hour left, and uh, we're not going to upload this video. So if you got a question, get in on the action. Oh. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, ho. Okay, we have a question. We from California. California house is built on a sand hill, and the lot is four feet higher than the neighbor's yard. Wow, <laughs> good for the neighbor. Fence is being pushed over by the sand. Best replacement for the fence, lower four foot retaining wall section? Question mark. Yeah, definitely stone. Your problem with sand is like. It's, it's sand. And so when it gets wet, it moves. Um, man, yeah, you definitely need a retaining wall. Get some great big stone wall in there. You got to, you got to change that. You'll never, ever see in your life, a fence, hold back a sand wall. Like you just can't get that. I don't know how you got away with that fence in the first place. That seems like, so somebody built it on a weekend when no one was looking kind of deal, you know? In the dark, yeah, because there's no way you can put a fence in between two different property heights when you've got a sand base and expect this not to erode and just collapse the thing. I mean, holy cow. You know, if you're not going to fix it, then buy a dog that's designed to find the people when they're buried in a landslide because that's what you're going to get. It's going to just collapse and pour into your neighbor's yard and God help them if their children are out there when it happens. Like the <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Like you've got to really get an, an, an engineer out there to restructure that because we'd be rolling some come on seven dice going there. That's that's scary. All right, on another level. I have a ceiling repair spot that I've plastered. I'm about to sand and finish it. What blocks slash sanding method should I use to make sure it's not all wavy? a really big sanding block. Like they make sanding blocks this long. The bigger the block, the cleaner you sand. The less pressure, the cleaner you sand, okay? You can also buy um, a round sanding disc that I use in my videos. That's really good because that's easy pressure over a large area. Uh, as soon as you start using your elbow grease to sand, you're gonna make grooves. So be careful with that. And if you make grooves, then just fill them. But Here's the thing. If you're looking for a really good finish and you're, you're not really skilled at the drywall trade thing yet, you can drywall sand and then prime and then fill and then sand again. And you won't ever sand through the primer. huh? And you can do that over and over and over again until you get it nice and flat. And that is how you can fix your problem. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that a hundred times if you have to. And that is how you can, because you won't ever sand past the paint layer that way. And that's how you can fill in all those gaps that aren't working. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Ah. Oh. <laughs> what do we got going on there, Maddie? You wrote that one down? That's like money in the bank. That's a great, that's a great cheat. So if you're a rookie and you're doing drywall and you do all your mud and you sand it and you prime it and there's things you don't like. And, you know, well, you've primed already, so you're going to fill it. But if you sand it and you go, ooh, that's nasty, and then you go to repair it, you're just as likely to sand that right back to where you came from. So paint it first and then fix it. Always paint and fix. Paint and fix. Paint and fix until you're happy. Then put your finish coats on. Yeah, I know. It works. All right. Oh, Mary's saying they need a couple of St. Bernard dogs to hunt the people out of that sand avalanche. <laughs> We don't wish that on nobody, but my God, that'd make a movie. All right. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> um, Godzilla is asking a question. He's looking to do a basement. It must be like, what, 95 stories deep? <laughs> That's a big basement. Can I get back up there? Yeah, We scrolled right past the rest of the question. It's from Godzilla. You can't miss it. All right, there we go. You think the price of lumber will go down? Home from St. Catharines, Ontario. Um, the answer to the lumber price is this. No, it's going up. Yeah, but you can work with steel studs. And then if Home Depot ever stocks drywall again, then you'll be able to put that up too. 
So uh, good luck with that. Be patient. And if you're going to order material down the road, order it now. Okay. Because you can put drywall in a stack in the basement and you can still work and around it. You're better to do that. Matthew's taking a slight break. We should put on some elevator music or something. All right. JP is asking me here. He bought a small roll of sheet vinyl for a room. Indoor dog kennel bedroom for my pups. Nice. The sheet vinyl expand and contract with temperature change. Hmm. A little bit. Like if you're in southern climate, JP, and you got like a lot of direct sunlight, um, you're going to find that it'll actually start to shrink up on you a little bit. Okay. It'll tighten up like a drum skin. So consider that. Um, maybe blinds or curtains just to keep the sun off and it'll help. Um, but a loose lace sheet vinyl is going to be really effective way to create a nice uh, clean floor that you can manage with puppies for sure. Right. That is brilliant. It's like what uh, you can get a six by nine for like 50 bucks, 50 bucks, one and done. You just roll it out. Boom, done. Cut trim around the edges. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah. But uh, just be careful with the sunshine. Over a couple of years, it'll start to shrivel up and, and it'll get nasty. So protect that. All right. Larry, I am so tired. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm freaking exhausted. But um, I got really irritated this week when I was starting to see all these uh, shortages already. Like, my God, we haven't even got the snow melted where I live. And already we can't get material. Uh, it's maddening. It's going to be one of those years. Okay, um, bum, 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 bum. feelings. Oh, I'm not even scrolling properly here, Matt. Oh my goodness, I'm a rookie. Um, we got a former neighbor built the fence when I was a kid. Surprised it lasted so long. Oh, you got a husky who loves digging. Perfect lot for her. Yeah, I bet. Okay, oh, there you go. Yeah, listen, I, I hope you don't take that too bad. But yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> If the neighbor built the fence, then it's the neighbor's problem. <laughs> Isn't that how that works? Hey, Jeff from Canada. There's two of us. Oh, it's Jeff from Texas. Oh, there's a Jeff in each country. Right on. You talked about the bat wing drywall tool. Yes. You called it the best tool for corners. Which is better, it or a corner trowel? You know, if it's a 45-degree angle, right, like you're going up and then sloping, it's perfect for that soft corner. Like it's perfect for soft corners. But if you're going 90 degree, then the corner trial works great. Or just learn how to use the four inch, two coats on one side, let it dry and harden, two coats on the other side. Cause then you got a nice smooth edge to work with. We got, uh, we got some more videos coming up real soon to talk about drywall tools and techniques and tips and tricks just to help, you know, fill in some of the learning curve. Um, hopefully that'll help. But you know, if you're a homeowner and you're just looking to get something done and you're rebuilding from Texas and you want to buy that tool, that's an inside corner trowel, it works pretty good. The idea is uh, be generous with it. And then when it's all dry, you can take an inside corner sanding sponge and clean out your line a little bit until you get the look you're looking for. Cheers, buddy. All right. Almost a librarian. Oh, you're this close. Um, what do you think of all the folks moving to the East coast? Like New Brunswick, any advice for folks buying old houses there, including me? Yeah, <laughs> buy it quick before they're all gone and the price goes up. <laughs> there's a ton of people. There's an exodus of retirees from Ontario cashing in on this craze and heading east, honey, because you know what? They're not going to be there in the wintertime. So they are, they're, they're going with the whole six and six program. Snowbirdatorium is what I'm calling it. And they're all going out east because they can buy a four bedroom home for a hundred thousand bucks and you're darn tootin' they're going to do it. They're going to sit there with an ocean view in the summertime and love every minute of it. And as soon as it gets cold, they're going to flap their wings and go south. So if you're thinking of doing it, do it sooner than later. I'm telling you right now. Okay. Uh, oh, man. Oh, man. My neck, dude. Like, I need, I, need, I need a good beating or a massage or something. I don't know what's going on. Um. Is there a low cost alternative to wood for joists and framing a deck? No. No, there is no low cost alternative. Um, man, oh man. The only low cost alternative to decking this year is going to be to build a concrete paver patio in your backyard. Right? 
And it's not a low cost, but it's an alternative. Because at least you'll be able to find pavers. <laughs> You're not going to find wood. Uh, JP said he forgot to ask. Oh, can I silicone around the bottom edge of the trim to the loose lay vinyl with flexible clear silicone? Yeah. You know, JP, if you do that and... And the other option is to add some like quarter round trim onto your baseboard. But if you're just going to cut it in nice and tight to your baseboard or take the baseboard off, lay your floor and then put the baseboard on top, clear silicone will work out great. Just make sure you painted the trim nice first. Okay. And then you're actually going to create that little waterproof layer that I know you're thinking about because of the puppies. It's a good idea. Clear silicone all the way. Definitely will bond to the flooring. Definitely will bond to your painted trim. All right. Cheers, man. Good luck with the pups. All right. Uh, is that rye or water in your glass? So this, okay, let's talk about tonight. This is not rye or water. Tonight we are drinking, um, what was it called again? Creos. It's a fantastic Pinot Grigio from the Mendoza region in Argentina. And because of our import-export deal, it's $13 a bottle, which is one hell of a deal. And it is a superior quality. This is a vintage wine. Amazing. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, wouldn't be very good with seafood, but delicious as a sipper. All right. <laughs> case you want to know. Mm. We have a question here. Which uh, which grout should I use for my subway tile backsplash? Premixed epoxy, grout and option. There's such a thing as premixed epoxy. If there is, it's it they're lying to you. I don't think that even exists. Okay? Epoxy doesn't need air to, to, to dry. You, you mix two components together. It's a chemical reaction. So, what if you had a third chemical? So, if, if it's anything else other than a two part epoxy, it's not really epoxy. It's just marketing. I wouldn't buy that crap. Um, if you're doing a tile backsplash, then, then epoxy is not necessary, right? Regular unsanded grout will work great. You can even, you can even apply a sealer on the grout afterwards. But when you when I get a question like, should I use this kind of pre-mixed epoxy stuff? It means you haven't done enough tile work to know the difference between what you should and shouldn't use. Don't start with something that could be a disaster, right? Do something that's generally basic and gives you lots of working time. So regular unsanded grout, apply a sealer when you're done, and you've got all the working time in the world to practice your skills and polish and get it all. If you start going with advanced technologies, you might run into trouble faster than you can fix it. And that's the danger. So you know, be careful with your experience level when you're trying to, you know, up your game because they'll sell you products that make it sound like it's a DIY friendly epoxy. Like there's no such thing, dude, you know, like, like these automatic weapons are made for three-year-olds. That's just a sentence that doesn't exist, right? Like you can't do this. You got to moderate your expectation and your skill level of what you're trying to accomplish, right? Don't let the marketing, you know, take over your brain cells. Like, <laughs> no such thing as pre-mixed epoxy for DIYers who've never tiled before. That's just, you know, like, I mean, come on. All right. Uh, Stan, welcome to the club. Money in the bank. You know, and it's maybe even a laugh on a Thursday once in a while. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so, here. <laughs> This is a great question. I love this. Um, uh, Anan is asking me, if you have an outdoor sink, you ready for this? Is it okay to have it drain in your grass? Here's the question. What are you washing down that sink? Because, you know, when I was a painter and we washed our brushes and rollers, we'd do it in the front yard of a client's home and we'd hose it down. Who gives a rip, Right. Yeah, okay, you might have a pink yard for a couple of days, but it's going to go away. I mean, it's not an issue. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, um, if your neighbors aren't going to tell on you and, and you're not doing really crazy things with the sink, then don't worry about it. Uh, if it's like an outdoor wet bar sink and you want to drain it into a pail, you're going to have to manage that, right? Like, I mean, if it's going just into the grass, eh, it gets stinky and smelly and it attract flies. But if you're going to dig a hole a couple of feet deep, right, and fill it with gravel and run a drain pipe into that gravel, all of a sudden, it's kind of more like a septic system. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of a redneck septic system, but it'll work. Um, Jedi of the Republic. Oh, Mike, join the membership. Cheers, Mike. 
Give me an excuse to have a sip. Jedi of the Republic has a question. Hey, Jeff, got a couple of windows where there is a gap between the siding and the trim, leaving about a two and a half inch gap. That's not a gap. That's a hole you can drive a truck through. Wow. You can see the aluminum window through it. Should I put foam in there and close up the holes? Whew. Man. Man, I would love to see a picture of that. A two and a half inch gap between the siding and the trim. I guess that all depends on, is your window sealed to the house wrap of the house? And then it's just the facade that has an issue? Or is is your window a replacement window and now there's a, a gap between your window and the siding and the trim and it's allowing things into the house? If that's the case, foam may or may not be the solution. Foam might be a temporary fix for thermal, but not for moisture. You might need to open that up a little bit and weather seal your window to the, the weather protection on the home, if it exists. That is tough. If you got a house wrap and you got a replacement window and there's a gap between the two and they're not sealed up, foam is not gonna solve that problem. Water will still work its way behind it. So you might have to open up some of your siding. There is a siding tool out there you can disengage and you can pull some nails and pull things apart and do a, some, some, some waterproofing tape. But try to get some flashing on there so that you're actually diverting water and knowing it's going to be successful. Tough one. Cheers. Original aluminum windows. Okay, so if that's the case, then you don't have new construction flange. So if you have a gap between your aluminum window and your siding, Two inch by half inch. Okay. So it's a half inch gap, two inches long. That's not that big a deal. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to backtrack. If you have an aluminum siding with a small gap and you want to throw a little foam in it, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Because that old aluminum window was never installed to be weather tight anyway. Those practices didn't exist back in those days. So that'll definitely, it won't get any worse than what you got dealing with right now. And if it's on the sides, fine. If it's on the bottom, fine. If it's on the top, eh, eh. maybe not the best advice, but yeah, we'll go with that. Hey, chocolate's in the house. Good to see you, chocolate. Um, you want to turn your car into a house? And I'd like to turn myself into a six pack. That's a hell of a thought. You know, a car into a house. You can do that simply by throwing in a sleeping bag. <laughs> I mean, wow. Uh, just being quiet today, eh? Yeah, that's good. You know, I get it. Every once in a while, we just need those quiet moments. Musfaba. All right. In a new residential building, would you go for LEED certification? Not a bloody chance. I'll leave that up to the commercial folks. Um, you're welcome, Jedi of the Republic. Cheers. Glad I was able to be helpful. Um, uh, maybe a little silly tonight, but there's still a little wisdom ringing around in there somewhere. Um, Cliff's saying, I hate the vinyl siding. I pulled a little bit of off a peak of my porch and found some great original gingerbread wood siding, which I painted. Yeah. Okay. And you know what? Had the vinyl siding not been installed to protect it, it would have been rotten by now. So we can thank whoever installed the vinyl to protect the gingerbread. Five minutes to go. T, five minutes. All right. Um, Gianni's jumping in here. Happy to be here. Sorry I missed the beginning of the stream because I'm experiencing these supply issues everywhere. Right? Yeah. I know. I'm telling you. Make sure you got a staging area this year, kids. Make sure that you buy everything you need and you have it on site before you get committed. Or the room that you're renovating, you're okay having left unfinished for six months to a year because that's the kind of deal we're dealing with. I'm still saying this is the best year to paint. If you, if you have got something in your house, not painted by the end of the year, then you've wasted a perfectly good year. <laughs> uh, ceramic versus porcelain in a shower wall. Don't care. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of being cheap on the tile in a shower wall. Once I've waterproofed, that's where the money should go. Put money in waterproofing, not in the tile. Uh, you're, and any ceramic will do just as good in a, in a shower if you've got a good waterproofing system. So feel free. Um, bum, bum, bum. Five minute warning, folks. That's right. Last call. <laughs> if 
had a dollar for every time I heard that. All right. What is buying at wholesale? Well, that's simple. Um, the supply chain allows people who own businesses to buy at a, a very reduced price. They don't let you do that because you're a homeowner and you don't own a business. So they sell it to you at retail. So they take four things out of a box and put them on a shelf so you can buy one at a time. The rest of the world can order a box of four and get it for half the price. But that is the difference. Uh, and in a lot of construction materials, we have the same concept, only we're, we, we order everything by, by exactly the order. So it makes no difference for homeowners not to get a commercial deal if they're going to order a bunch of windows and siding or something or a kitchen cabinet. But we've got this crazy inflated marketplace so people can get paid to do the installation and get paid to supply the product and they get paid twice. And most homeowners aren't aware that these guys are double dipping. In zone five, uh, should not insulation attic, ceiling and walls to store Christmas lights up there. Already insulated for the house. Modern hippie. What am I supposed to do with you? Where the hell is zone five, man? Is that like Tennessee? I get confused with that sometimes. Man, sometimes, you know, you gotta live in your own little box so much you forget all this information you used to know. You're... So who is that? who's telling you not to insulate? Here's one of my pet peeves. People, when you come on here and you're saying, okay, zone five. So yeah, so like Midwest. All right, all right. Guaranteed, you're going to get bloody cold there. So if you want to use your attic to store stuff, right? And, 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 and you've got a ceiling and they've insulated the flat part. You can insulate the attic all you bloody well like, but unless you bring in a heat system and a vapor barrier system and you, you make that a conditioned space, you shouldn't be storing stuff up there unless you don't care if it gets cold and freezing cold and maybe even a little moldy. It's really quite interesting. Two minutes left to go. Paul Peck just jumped in. When's the next show? That's a great question. What are we, what are we going to do? We'll do a week. You know what? Let's do next Thursday. Next Thursday, next Thursday night. Awesome. Be there or be square. Is the I'm not asking anybody. I love Thursdays. I'm going to be available on Thursday night for a live show next week. All right. We'll do this again. I think that's a great idea. We'll do it from 6 to 8 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time, or whatever that means, to wherever you are. Three to five Pacific Time. If you're in the mountains, it's something in the middle. Um, I have no idea. Right? And again, I'm not putting these up ever, ever, ever again. So if you got questions or you want to be a part of this, then be a part of it. All right? It's a great way to spend Thursday. What else are you going to do? Watch reruns? Lord knows, Hollywood and TV shows haven't come out with a new episode in about 180 days or 200 days or so. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Listen, I really appreciate y'all hanging out, okay? Uh, I, I think it's awesome. If you're renovating this year, lots of patience. Maybe even a little bit of Creos to get through the year, you know what I mean? It's going to be a hell of a ride. We're going to do it together because I'm also renovating. I'm not out of this game. I'm, I'm selling my house soon. I'm going to be on a brand new project. Um, yeah, I know. I got all kinds of wonderful things I want to announce, but I can't do it yet. I'm not allowed. Okay. Uh, hopefully this was enjoyable. It was fun for you as it was for me. I enjoy doing this. Matt, thanks for all you're doing tonight, buddy. Appreciate your help. Thank you for employing me. You rock. That's my kid, man. I love my kid. He's freaking awesome. All right. Yeah, I'll try to tell it to you straight if I can. Uh, hey, cheers. We got people from Ottawa on this feed tonight, man. That's awesome. I live here. They still watch. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. Oh, anyway, um, until next week, what do we like keep your ice dry? Keep your stick on the ice. What do we call it? Uh, like a Ron, Ron, Ron Burgundy, uh... Oh, stay classy, North America. <laughs> <laughs>